Hey guys, uh, I'm going to do a shootout of three amplifiers that I'm using for acoustic guitar. Uh, this is the dedicated Fender 100, it's Acoustic Sonic 100, so it's, it is an acoustic amp. Next to it is a Fishman Loudbox Mini Charge, so it can be battery powered. I do have it plugged in right now. Um, also an acoustic specific amplifier. I believe it's 60 watts. The Fender is 100 watts. And the Bose, I don't remember what the wattage is, but this is a Bose S1 Pro. And it's also very capable and has uh, battery capabilities as well. So that's certainly nice on the Fishman and the Bose. The Fender does not have the battery. But I wanted to see could I get a little bit fuller, richer, bolder sound uh, for my in-home studio. So I thought I'd try out the Fender and I want to show you what they sound like. I've EQ'd them to where I think they sound best with this guitar. Um, so I'm sorry I don't have the capability of showing you those settings while I play, but let me just have you uh, use your ears, tell me what you think, and I'm going to use my ears, and um, I will turn the guitar away to minimize bleed through from the recorder mic. I do have the volume up on the amps enough that I believe the sound you're hearing in the room and in the recording is largely the amplified sound. Here is the Fender Acoustic Sonic 100 and again I'm turning the guitar away so it's not facing the mic. That's the Fender. Here is the Fishman Loudbox Mini Charge. Alright, let me do that cross picking thing too. back to the fender and do that same cross picking back to back back to the Fishman, do the same thing. One more time on the Fender, just to give you a back to back. And 
back to the Fishman. We'll bring the bows in in a minute. So, how I have these EQ'd, uh, I do have the treble just a little above noon on the Fender. To me, in the room, it's a little bit brittle. Um, the Fishman has a natural sweetness to it. Um, the Fishman right now, the master volume is about 1 o'clock, and the input gain is a little less than noon. That's about as much as it will give in terms of usable volume before I hit the low E string and it just starts pushing that woofer a little too hard and you start to get a little raspy sound. Um, so that's about the max from the Fishman, which is a really nice sound. Um, for me, it's not quite giggable. Maybe if I was using it as a monitor and did a line out um, for uh, front of house, that might work. Um, but again, the point here for me is really playing at home. Here's that fish, here's the fender again. I'm going to play with the, the tone knobs. The treble is, right now I dial it down to 11 o'clock. Mid range is at 11 o'clock. When I take the mid range down, lose some of that mid-range uh, mid definition. So I'm going to take that back up to like 11 o'clock. Let's see if I take the, vo the volume that's just a little above noon. I'm going to just inch it to 1 o'clock. That treble is still Oh, um Let me turn on some reverb Alright, this is a reverb and delay setting nice. You hear just a little bit of delay and reverb, so that's a nice setting. I'm going to set the level to noon on that reverb. Actually, let me just do, do reverb and no delay. It's a very fast reverb. That's a room reverb. Deeper reverb. Yeah, I'm going to go to room. Yeah, not loving the reverb. And I'm taking the level levels at, at um, 3 o'clock right now, which is almost all the way up. It's just a very, very fast reverb. Yeah, that's a room reverb. It's just a really quick delay. Took the mid range up to almost noon just now. So I think the mid-range gives me some definition. Alright, let's go back to the Fishman. And again, we'll get to the bows. Uh, but I think the Fender and the Fishman are um, they're both dedicated acoustic amps. Listen to the reverb. It's a nice reverb in the Fishman. I do have the reverb is set 
straight up at noon. It's 12 o'clock. Um, again, the gain is 11 o'clock. The mid-range, uh, I'm sorry, the low is at noon. The mid-range, I've scooped all the way down to 7 o'clock, its lowest setting. And I've got the high end attenuated just to about 10 o'clock, which I think sounds musical. There's plenty of treble. <laughs> volume out of it. I'll take the master up just a little bit to two o'clock. making this long but I, I want to listen back and hear um, without having the guitar in my ear while I'm playing um, so I'm going to come back to the fender and then we'll bring in the bows Pretty good, about as good as I can get, I think. Here is the Bose. Uh, by the way, the Bose has three switch settings. Normal, there's a tone match setting, which has some pre-DSP digital signal processor engaged. I don't actually like this that setting, and there's only one setting on this S1 Pro that does that. And then there's a mic setting, which is actually not bad. Uh, the controls are, there's a volume, bass, treble, and there's a reverb. And so here's the reverb. Alright, I've got the um, tone controls are pretty much at noon, straight up, so they're flat, bass, and treble. And the volume is just a just a hair under straight up at noon, because I'm so close to it, I don't want to feed back. two channels I have not even plugged into the vocal well actually I'm calling it a vocal channel the second channel the Bose is probably the most natural in terms of vocals um, I don't like the vocal channel in the Fishman really to speak of it's just got bass and treble and reverb and um, it's just okay and again the volume is just barely adequate the Bose is really capable I've not tried it yet in uh, the fender, uh, the controls on both channels are identical. So there's volume, bass, middle, treble, reverb, or basically an effects control, and then there's a variety of effects. So I'm going to do less talking now, just go round robin with these three systems. This is the Bose. cool thing. The Bose has different angles on the cabinet so I can set it up in a monitor configuration where it's tilted back 
And I believe Bose has built some technology into it. When you put it in a different position, it auto EQs and sounds different. So that was just set out straight out in a horizontal fashion. Now it's angled back. Let's hear if it sounds different. sounded pretty much the same to me here's another position so it's got a you can kick it back vertically that sounds more mid-rangey there's less bass this way to me and then you can go flat Although I have an amp handle that's preventing perfectly flat. Yeah, mostly it sounded pretty much the same. Here's vertically or horizontally. That sounds better. It sounds a little bit um, richer, but a little more bass. And let's do the tilt. This is kind of like a, if you put it on the floor, that's a really nice feature. This is a little bass. I actually think it sounds best like this, just for acoustic guitar. seventh fret. A little bloomy, it's a little bloomy. And again that might be the amp reverb I'm not loving. Let's go back to the Fishman. Here's that same B. It's more of a distinct note. It doesn't have kind of that bloom, maybe an upper bass or lower mid. All right, I'm going to show you one more thing. I know this is a long video. I'm going to solo over a loop because I think, and, and that's what I do when I perform live um, often, is, is I will take sections of a song and I'll play a solo while a loop is playing. And so some of these amplifiers, when I'm soloing, those notes stand out in a very nice way. Other amplifiers, they kind of get buried into the sound. So let's listen to that. Um, we'll start on the Fender. And I've already laid down a loop similar to what I've been playing. I don't know if the tempo is the same, but here we go.
kind of felt like my solo notes were again getting buried and lost in that. And it could be it's an eight inch speaker, so maybe the mid range doesn't cut quite enough. But let's see. Here is, I'm just checking the level. Here is the Fishman Loudbox Mini Charge. solo notes really kind of held their own space um, and that's always an interesting thing that we don't catch in a lot of these YouTube demo videos is you might not hear a band in context with other music playing um, doesn't have to be a loop it could be somebody else playing along with you uh, but here's the bows <laughs> the two dedicated acoustic amps. The Bose is battery powered, portable PA. It can work for acoustic guitar. Um, I'll tell you what, I'll show you one more thing. Let me, let me switch into that. That was the normal setting. I'm switching. I can feel the switch in the back. This is, so here's normal. <laughs> And again, listen to the reverb in the bows. Oh, hang on. I actually hit. Nice reverb. All right, so let me switch. That's the normal. Here's the tone match setting. Just gets really brittle. And so now I can EQ. I'll add some bass. I'll take the treble down. like that at all. Uh, take the EQ back to flat and here is the mic setting. So there's just a little toggle switch. Actually you just push it. And I'm taking the treble down, add a little more. This is the mic setting even though I'm plugged in with quarter inch um, guitar cables. <laughs> back to the normal setting, put the EQ back to flat, all right, I'm going to stop there. Um, to me, I, I've done the math before starting this video, that normal switch setting to me is the most natural sounding in the bows. Um, one other cool thing about the bows is it has this cool handle in the top. So I don't know if you can see that, but it's just a nice little grab handle. And in the bottom, there's a hole in the bottom 
Oops. All right. There is a hole in the bottom and the back. So you can mount this on a stand. So a lot of versatility in the bows. I don't mean to make it sound like I am pitching the bows as better than these um, for acoustic guitar. I think the Fishman sounds super, super natural. I think the bows is super, super versatile. And the Fender with its 8 inch speaker, it's a nice sounding amp. For the money, it's the least expensive of all these. Very capable, good sounding home acoustic amp. It may sound different on the floor, but for purposes of this video, um, I didn't have a table where I could put them all on the same level. Um, so I got them as close as I could to keep that sound and the relationship to the microphone on axis. So I'm uh, just trying to be as methodical as possible. What do you guys think? Long video, um, but I hope it's useful and informative. Uh, welcome your thoughts, good or bad. If you're new to the channel, please ring the bell, uh, subscribe to the channel. I appreciate all your comments, good or bad, and um, let me know what you think.